Hello and welcome. In this session, we will see how you can write your technical work to a non technical audience. We call this accessible science writing. What is accessible science writing? To whom is it accessible to? It is accessible to non specialists. They may be from other disciplines, they may be policy makers, bureaucrats, politicians, school students who are exposed to some amount of science, but not necessarily the high science that you have studied. It could be general public, including maybe people of your own family who are not of science background. More importantly, there is a non-scientist in you, there is a human in you. Can you explain your work to this part of you? Why is it important to write science in an accessible way? It is important because as citizens, we need to make choices several times. And clear writing by experts is very important for them to make these choices. Can we express the enthusiasm, clarity and the human element to these people and to that non-scientist in ourselves? Most of this work that I will be showing to you is from this book on writing well by William Zinser, an informal guide to writing non-fiction. This book is very well written itself. It discusses various principles of writing, simplicity, clutter and style. It also discusses some details about the methods, unity, lead and ending. And it also has other forms of non-fictional writing, which is for science and technology, business, arts and sports. We will be concentrating mainly on the principles and methods to science and technology writing. Firstly, the clarity. When you write science for general public, you stress on one fact and this one fact needs to be built from bottom up. You do not go and say several important facts at all that you have done, but just one fact. Start with one and slowly build it up by logical sequence of facts by using deduction and related facts. Now, how is it important to current society and what else may happen if something does not happen or if something happens? If you are clear yourself about this one fact in an article that you are going to convey, it will also come out itself in the way you express the detail article. It is also important to represent the vigor, the vigor that you felt as an author or as a scientist doing the work. You are the protagonist in this, you have done the work or maybe you are writing on behalf of somebody else. You need to bring out the enthusiasm of the protagonist. How was she drawn into this problem? What social compulsions or what constraints or what uh, challenges that brought this author to work on this problem? What were some preconceptions and fears? Preconception fears all of us have, apprehensions all of us have. And these are the things that people can relate to. Bring that trigger in this. And how did she overcome all these things while solving the problem? Did it change her life? And if so, how? What is she looking forward to in it? What were the thrills and mysteries in solving the problem? These are some things that people can relate to. What was the hard work involved? Does it involve some field studies? Does it involve staying late nights, doing some experiments and so on? Common people will not know the kind of hard work that we put into in our work 
and unless you state them in a nicely accessible manner, they will not be able to appreciate it. Did she have to fight against some societal and institutional challenges in solving this problem? State it. Finally, most important thing is to relate to the audience and you relate to them using what is known as human elements. Human elements are felt by all of us. When you address common citizens, you need to relate to them by emotions, feelings, perceptions, thrills and suspense. These are all part of human character. Some of the human elements could be human acts. For example, in a work on the states of a brain, it was a purely neurological study and this is how the author begins the first line of the article. There was a chimpanzee in California with a talent of playing tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe is some game which most of us have played. And look at the way this author has brought it out. The first line starts with saying a chimpanzee playing tic-tac-toe. Is that normal? No, it is not. But it brings a curiosity in the reader. The first question that comes to a reader is what? A chimpanzee is playing tic-tac-toe? or it could be something of your own personal experience, which anybody else in your reader could have had. Now, in this article, the author writes about brain and memory, and she wants to stress how different things are stored in our memory. It is a purely scientific work, but how does she start? She says, more than 30 years have passed but I still feel the anger and humiliation of that day when a playmate tossed a handful of sand in my face. Now, how many of us remember such facts from our early childhood, where we were hurt by our friends, where we fell off some tree? These are some things that people will relate to. And you could use some of these things to help you connect with the audience. And in the book, you will see many more such ways to relate to the audience. Now, we will look at some principles that is given in the book, which could use as tips to write an article for the general public. First is a principle of simplicity. Can you strip every page to the cleanest components? Can you strip a page of work to a paragraph? Can you reduce a paragraph to one sentence? Can you reduce a sentence to a phrase and a phrase to a word? And if you can use it in the simplest form, do it. Do not expand unnecessarily to a long article. And this brings in clarity. And clarity comes from clear thinking and that translates to clear writing. Normally, an attention that a reader can give you is 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds, you need to keep the reader closely connected. If you lose your reader for 30 seconds, there are a lot of things the reader can get occupied in. It could be TV, email, internet or even another article. So, you need to keep your sentences short without any complexities and convey the crux of it. For example, take a look at these two sentences. The one way of stating it is, we are presently anticipating experiencing considerable precipitation, which stated simply is, we think it may rain. Now, this is a very nice classical uh, sentence. In one of the world wars, when there were some attacks from the Japanese in the US territory. The government there came up with this notice, which was put up on the walls. It read as follows, such preparations shall be made as will completely obscure all federal buildings and non-federal buildings occupied by federal government 
during an ad raid for any period of time from visibility by reason of internal or external illumination. What did you make of it? Now, if you want, you can pause this video and read it again. I could not make anything of it. Now, this was shown to the then president and he came up with a shorter simple statement. It read as follows. In buildings where they have to keep their work going, put something to cover the windows. That is all it said. Now, you go back and read, you will understand what they said. Now, remember the idea for the government was to convey to its employees to keep continuing work and these employees are common people. They are not bureaucrats. They do not understand this complicated English. How do you convey science in a simple way? A second principle that you could follow is the principle of zero clutter. A good writing is inversely proportional to the clutter. You have lot of clutter, it is really bad. Do not use unnecessary adverbs, adjectives and concept nouns. For example, compare these both. At this point of time, currently, at the present time is essentially now. Free up a few minutes of time. Just say free up, free a few minutes. A personal friend of mine. What friend is not personal? Just say friend of mine. My personal doctor. Are there impersonal doctors? Just say doctor. At the present time, we are experiencing considerable precipitation. Again, like the previous one, it is raining. I might add that it should be pointed out, it is interesting to note all that is just superfluous, just state it. If it is interesting, the reader will find out. The last principle I want to stress is the principle of unities. Unity is something which ties the article. There are different levels of unities. Firstly, in what capacity you are writing the article? Are you a reporter? Are you the person who did this work or you are a citizen who is writing it for somebody else. What pronoun and tense? Use a consistent pronoun and consistent tense. What is the attitude you are taking? Are you deeply involved? Are you taking detached? Are you taking judgmental? Are you are just amused? How much to cover? What one point that is going through this article that you want to convey? not two, not five, what is that one point? Leads and ends are very important to an article. The most important sentence in any article is the first one and each sentence induces to the next and every paragraph amplifies from the previous. Similarly, ending keep a surprise, a jolt, a thought provoking line. Do not simply recollect facts by restating just as you would do in a technical article. Relate to the first lead sentence. These are some ways you could relate to the audience. Finally, to some essence of writing. Writing is a craft, it is not an art. And a craft is perfected by practice. Writing is hard work. A clear statement that you see is not by an accident. People have worked on it, polished it, improved it to get that beautiful looking sentence. 90 percent is in mastering the principles. Of course, there is some natural gift for some people, but most of it will go if you are ready to work hard. The essence of writing is rewriting. The more you rewrite, the more perfect you can make a sentence to look. Professional writers always rewrite their sentences over and over and then they rewrite what they have rewritten. You have to have an obsessive pride for perfecting even small details of the draft. Thank you for listening.